Has the Lord given you a vision for a company, for a business, for a nonprofit, for a church that you felt like this is so from the Lord and you just got so excited about going down that path with him. But then over time, the journey became a lot more difficult than you expected. And maybe you, you were overcome with disappointment because things didn't turn out the way that you thought that they would, or maybe the whole thing fell apart completely. And you wonder if you were even hearing from God or if God was in it at all. And if there is a redemption story for what God had given you. Well, in today's episode of Directed Life, I want to share with you a very personal story that I've walked through this year of how I, a vision that the Lord had given me seemed like it was going in the right direction all of a sudden kind of blew up in my face. I went through a, a lot of months and uh, weeks and months of heartache, of frustration, of wandering. And even in a short amount of time, I saw God redeem a vision, redeem hope, and redeem a future for a business that he had given me. Check it out. Today is Thursday, October 20th. I'm sitting here actually in a, a brand new office. From this angle, it lo probably looks a little bit like my last office, maybe a little bit of color change in the background. And I started a new job a few weeks ago, which I'm very excited about. I'm working fully remote for, uh, I'll tell you that story in a, in a minute. Uh, I'm sitting here in my office. It's towards the end of the workday. And I just opened up uh, the Word. I was opening up my uh, the, the daily reading schedule that we have as a church, and you know I'm kind of my mind's kind of scattered. I'm kind of all over the place with just looking through my emails, and I'm kind of like, what am I doing right now? I just you know, you ever feel like that at the end of a day, where you just feel like you're not being productive, and you kind of need to get recalibrated and kind of empty your mind, maybe journal a little bit. Well, I decided to open up the Word of God and. Something stuck out to me that just really compelled me just to record this video. And quite honestly, I don't know if you're watching this, if I uh, ever published it publicly or if I just saved it for myself or saved it for my kids. But um, I'll just share like what really stuck out to me. So in the readings that, uh, that we're going through for our church, the year is 2022, if this is a time capsule for the future. We are in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 for our primary readings, and we are in Psalm 145 for our secondary readings. Here's the theme that sticks out in both of them. 1 Chronicles 16 verse 24 says, Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. And then in Psalm 145 it says, let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will, I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. So for those who have been following along with my story, you know that I... Uh, I'm a filmmaker first and a marketer second. I've been in full-time ministry uh, for a little while in regards to just serving on a, on a church leadership team in Omaha, Nebraska called Love Church. A few years ago, the Lord called me to leave my full-time vocational role for the church and go all in on building a business called Reveal Media. I mean, the history of that has been pretty remarkable. Even in the first year that I went full-time in this new venture, we produced our first feature documentary called Acts. We uh, literally uh, were led by the Holy Spirit to go to Turkana, Kenya to find a woman that I didn't even know existed, but the Lord told me, I want you to capture her story. I want you to create a documentary about the journey. So we produced this documentary in faith. We went to Turkana, Kenya. We found her, captured her story, came back, crowdfunded the completion of the film, released the film as a premiere on New Year's Eve going into 2020. And there's like the whole the whole reason, the, like the reason why I'm sharing that component about this business is it was so clear to me that the Lord was birthing this business through me because he wanted to share his stories across the globe. And I knew that he wanted to use this business 
in the secular marketplace, or really just, you know, to, to work with people that aren't believers, that aren't kingdom minded, that aren't Christians, that aren't churches, that aren't whatever, and to leverage that influence and that resource to be able to fund projects that are really in his heart to tell his stories. Well, over time, if I can be completely honest, I feel like we really allowed the cart to drive the horse. And I really started to focus on you know, figuring out how do we sell our product and our services to businesses that don't honor the Lord, that are worldly, and uh, and really just trying to figure out like, okay, we got to build this business in order to go and and fund these these more kingdom driven initiatives. So, like, the desire was was like a noble desire, right? Like, we wanted to go and and redeem these resources for the, the work of God, but um, it's it's embarrassing to say, but over time, what happened was we became um, we came we became pretty financially unhealthy as a business, and it really all came to a head this year. Uh, it was really kind of around May of you know 2020 this year, where it all just kind of blew up in our face, and we were like trying to close deals, trying to make this thing work, honoring the Lord, trying to honor the Lord. By the way, this is what makes it so interesting: tithing off of the company and honoring our employees, hiring people that love Jesus, praying before meetings, being generous with our employees, being generous with our customers, being generous with other organizations. And it all kind of just fell apart. And I, I won't get too much in the details of how that happened, but basically we got, we were flipped upside down profitably as a company. And this, and this business that I thought was truly a promise from the Lord ended up feeling like a curse. It's like, man, like everything's falling apart. I'm having to let go half of our team. And I was in this moment with, uh, with the Lord in my, in my uh, previous home, we had just moved a few weeks ago. And I was in, I was in my office on the floor, literally journaling on this, on this remarkable tablet. I was journaling before the Lord and I was like, Lord, what happened? Where did this go wrong? I mean, we were building this business and I was trying to honor you. And where did this, where did this thing turn for the, for the worse? And where did I go wrong? You know, I'm, I'm like really trying to humble myself before the Lord and understand what happened. And so I'm praying and, and, you know, there's a, there's an exercise that I, I do a lot where when I'm journaling with the Lord, especially when I feel like I don't hear him, I'm journaling what I feel like he's saying. And so I journal and then I take a moment and I read what I had written down. And as I'm reading it out loud, I'm, I'm cut to the core by what's on this this tablet and what he had written through me was cap I cannot be bought off with a tithe I wanted full obedience from you I wanted this business to be um, a tent of worship where we could connect and you could invite other people into the tent and you would tell the stories that I want to tell and you haven't done that you you've led with the wrong thing and if you would have sought first the kingdom and my righteousness, all these things would have been added to you. And what's amazing is like that, that really began this process of the Lord kind of connecting the dots for me in some ways. I mean, it, another example of like of some dots that he was connecting was uh, up until this point, I'd been having recurring dreams, which the Lord speaks to me a lot through dreams. And in, in this recurring dream, I was in Finland of all places, which represents for me a, a creative ministry because I got the opportunity to go preach in Finland with my friend Ryan from UREV, this creative, uh, this creative school for missionary-minded people. And we were preaching in Finland to these different creatives. And so in this dream, I'm in Finland, which represents this creative entrepreneurial ministry that God's given me. And I'm supposed to catch my flight. Like I'm supposed to catch my flight either to Finland or from Finland. And every single time, I don't know what time it is. I don't know what time my flight is. I'm on my way to the airport. I feel lost. I feel confused. And and, and planes and dreams for me historically have meant uh, ministry. And so I always woke up from this dream like feeling unsettled. Like, am I missing my calling? Am I am I delayed? Am I not on the right track? Am I confused? And I've had this, I had this dream literally 14 different times. So think of like the number of number seven in the Bible is the number of completion. I've had this dream double completion. Like it was 
overwhelmingly clear that the Lord was like, you, he's trying to get my attention, I'll just say. But what's amazing is after I responded to the Lord earlier this summer and said, okay, I'm going to put this thing back before you and say, Lord, breathe on this thing however you want to breathe on it. And um, if you want this thing to be a vehicle for telling your stories, forgive me for not doing that in the first place. We're going to come back to the core of why you want to do this. And, um, and it would be a really high privilege for me to be a part of that. Even if it's not like this massive revenue generating machine, if this, if this business can truly be a means to tell your stories across the globe, I'm in. And so I made that commitment. I even invited, uh, some people that I, that were part of the company that I had to let go into that conversation. And they kind of confirmed that and they fanned the flames of that. And what's been amazing, quite honestly, is since then, since I've really like said, Lord, I'm, I'm willing to put reveal media back on the altar and say, you do what you want to do with this. This is your company. You breathe on it. You use it how you want to use it. I've seen a lot of areas of my life get restored this year. I mean, it's pretty wild because what's what's crazy is even with the business, the way that it was kind of falling apart financially this year, we were, you know, racking up a lot of debt. We were flipped upside down profitably in a matter of like days, in a matter of days, the Lord brought more business to, to our company than we had been able to bring in like the previous quarter. The Lord be, has begun bringing back people onto the team that I've had to let go. The Lord even, uh, you know, for our family, we're in the situation where our home was just, we were outgrowing our home with our, of all the kids we got. And the Lord provided a tremendous, overwhelming upgrade of a home for us in a community where we, we actually discovered we're backyard neighbors with some of our best friends from church and our kids' best friends. And they're just having the time of their lives. And I actually even just got offered this full-time job with an organization that I was uh, had the privilege of serving with, the organization is called Untrafficked. It's a it's an anti child sex trafficking organization, and I got invited to be the chief marketing officer of this organization, which has provided uh, our family a great level of stability and income, and is very fulfilling work. And it's allowing me to not be in the day to day of Reveal so much and try to build build Revealed in such a way where. It would support my family and and that has its own level of conflict of interest and like what are we trying to build with this company here? Or what what is the Lord trying to build with this company here? And so I'm saying all of this to say that like in such a short amount of time, after feeling like everything was falling apart and everything that we had been working on was going to, you know, going into chaos and coming to this place of really humbling myself before the Lord and saying, I'm listening. I'm listening. You got my attention. What do you want to do with this business? And after listening to the Lord and hearing him say, really, I want this in preparation for the return of my son and in the establishment of my kingdom here on earth. I want this company to be a means to help people who are carrying and are, and are heralds of my message I want this to be a vehicle for them to get their message out across the globe. And so, and when all that happened, it seemed like everything that was falling apart got restored and is still being restored. And not only restored, but restored doubly from what it was before. It's like the glory in the latter days is exceeding the glory in the former days, as it says in Haggai. And so I'm in this season just where I'm being overwhelmed by the Lord's goodness and his favor and his mercy and his kindness. But to kind of bring it full circle, as I'm sitting here in my office, I just feel like, man, this is a, this is a story of like redemption of, of rebirth of this company and, and what he wants to do through it that I haven't yet shared that I feel like is worth sharing. And so here I am trying to be faithful to this word, right? I'm in, you know, finishing up my work day and just feel like, hey, there's some un- there's some unfinished business that we have in regards to the story of this company, and so I feel like I just owed it to those who listen. Maybe I am publishing this you, by the time you're listening to this. It's you know it's already on the air, but I really just felt like I owe it to the Lord first to take this verse seriously, right? 
publish his glorious deeds among the nations, tell everyone about the amazing things he does. And to kind of wrap up, I'm just, I'm just here to celebrate, you know, Hey, shameless plug reveal media. We're, we are a video podcast company. We are here to serve um, really all sorts of different people, businesses, nonprofits, churches. And what we want to do is we want to make it easy, delightful to share that message in your heart with the world through video podcasting. We do video podcasting services. We help you with your, your full episode production, helping you run a season of content, helping you cut up that content into social media clips and sharing that with the world, helping you do the branding for your show. It's really fun that what we get to do, you know, what we get to do as a company, but I'm very excited that we are moving into this season where my desire is to actually build a network of shows to really redeem media in these days and to um, create a collective of, of content creators who are really championing these messages that God's putting on their heart, whether, whether you're a kingdom first business owner, whether you, you run a nonprofit or you run a church or you're a content creator that just wants to get that message out there. These services are meant for you to really help you and come alongside you and allow you to just not deal with the friction of all the things regarding production and distribution and allow you to just focus on making that vision clear, making that message clear for the world. So that's super exciting and that we get to do that right now. And if you want to learn more, just hit me up on social media or visit reveal, R-V-E-A-L dot media and just get in contact with us that way. But the point of what I'm trying to say too is maybe you're in this place where you feel like a vision that the Lord has given you is seemingly falling apart and it's bursting at the seams and it's it's going up in flames and you're wondering like, wait a second, like I thought I thought God was in this. I thought he was directing this. I thought God was directing what I was doing too. And a lot of, in a lot of ways he probably was, but you know, you could even be one degree off. Imagine like if you're, you know, swinging a golf club at a golf ball, if you're one degree off of your target, it might not make a big difference when you're only a few inches away from that tee where you hit the ball, but you go 500 yards down, down the stretch and one degree off 500 yards away, it makes a chasm of a difference. And I just feel like the Lord in my life has been, was really gracious to like pull the emergency brake and bring us to a screeching halt to say, where you're going is not where you intended to go. And if you keep on doing this 20 years down the road, you're going to look back and think, I missed it. I completely missed it. I missed my calling. I missed my flight. If you think about that dream that I had. I don't want you to miss it. That's like the Lord's heart. I don't want you to miss it. And if you're in that place and you're like, man, I feel like I'm working too hard for the results that I'm getting. Like the results I'm getting, it doesn't seem like the kingdom because in the kingdom, it should be like you, you sow and there's like, there's, there's a harvest that is the math doesn't make sense because then the, the Lord gets the glory for that math, right? You, you sow and you reap a hundredfold, not necessarily just financially, but just an impact and influence and peace and just an, a, a, an abundant life, right? If you're not in that place, you might not be in just deliberate sin, right? But maybe you're just one degree off of the true vision of what God's given you. And my prayer for you is to come to that place of humility and saying, Lord, Show me where I might be one degree off. Show me where I'm not trusting you. Show me where I am trusting in what seems right to a man and worldly strategies and worldly wisdom and what Forbes.com says and what entrepreneur.com says and what Gary Vaynerchuk says and what Grant Cardone says, uh, Alex Hermosi, whatever influencer on, on the internet, where have I been giving too much credit to what these other people are saying? and have neglected to just seek first the kingdom and allow your Holy Spirit to direct me in this thing. Because I'm telling you, if we would just trust the Lord at his word, if we would truly be directed by the Holy Spirit and allow him to direct our business, our career, our craft, and our calling, as I say, what he can do in us and through us is Ephesians 3.20, baby. It is infinitely more than we could ask, think, or imagine. So that's my encouragement to you. I hope you're blessed by this story. I hope you're challenged by it. If that's you, my prayer for you is that you would 
come before the Lord, allow him to speak to you, allow him to redirect you and be obedient to what he says, because here I am on the other side of this, this crazy multi-month journey. And I'm looking back and I'm thinking, though the path that I'd gone on the past few months was extremely painful, caused a lot of heartache. I feel like I've bruised relationships. God's restoring all of that. He, he's showing me that what that his ability to restore what is lost or what has been lost or even time that's been lost, the way that he can restore time and redeem time, it is just amazing. And it is such a testament to his goodness. Don't miss out on it. Get in his presence. Put that vision, put that career, put that calling, put that craft on the altar and say, God, correct me. Give me a, a, like a spiritual chiropractic adjustment. Please realign me with your vision and your heart the way that you intended. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please subscribe. Please share with a friend. Let me know what you think in the comments on YouTube. And if you're interested in learning more about our business, Reveal Media, visit rveal.media. Check it out. See you guys in the next episode.